Nobody expected the object to survive its last approach to the sun. For weeks, astronomers had been tracking three IATLAS as it raced into the inner solar system on a hyperbolic path, behaving like no comet or interstellar visitor ever recorded its surface temperature should have climbed past the point where ordinary material begins to crumble. Its structure should have fractured, its ices should have exploded outward into a massive dust cloud the moment sunlight struck it. But when the virtual telescope project finally captured the first high-resolution images on November 5th, the sight stunned everyone. The object wasn't breaking apart. It wasn't shedding material. It wasn't even weakening. It was intact, clean, sharp, and unnervingly stable. And then the shock deepened. The images revealed an anti-tail, a thin stream of material extending toward the sun instead of away from it. That's impossible under normal physics. Solar radiation forces dust outward. Jets always flow away from the sun. Nothing in nature produces a tail pointing inward. Yet there it was, stretching backwards like a dark signature drawn against the laws of motion. Within hours, Astronomers realized this was no observational illusion. The anti-tail was real and it was growing, but that wasn't the worst part. When data from KEK Observatory and the Lowell Observatory were compared with the virtual telescope readings, they revealed something even stranger. There was no gas cloud around 3IA TLAS, no coma, nothing evaporating from its surface. Even under a hundred times more solar radiation than the 1AU benchmark, the object remained dry. To survive that heat without losing mass, an interstellar body would need to be made of something far stronger than dust, ice, or rock. And yet the object's brightness didn't fade or fluctuate. Instead, it brightened. A clean, controlled increase five times brighter in just hours, without shedding a single detectable molecule. Avi Loeb ran the numbers himself. If the object had accelerated the way the astrometric data suggested, it would have required the release of five billion tons of material. But telescopes saw none of it. Not a dust plume, not a gas jet, not even a hint of sublimation. The region around the object was pristine. Every natural explanation collapsed under the math. Then the trajectory shift was confirmed. The object had deviated by four arc seconds, just a sliver of visual angle, but enough to translate into tens of thousands of kilometers of lateral displacement. A natural comet can be nudged by outgassing, but outgassing is chaotic, unpredictable, and usually rotationally destabilizing. 3 IIT LAS did not wobble, it did not tumble. It moved with a smooth, calm precision, as if something inside was adjusting its path in controlled increments. The deviation wasn't random, it was measured, it was intentional, and it was accelerating along two axes at once. A sunward pull and a perpendicular push converging into a vector that no comet's jets could produce. This wasn't the scattered impulse of frozen gases erupting from cracks. This was controlled acceleration. Astronomers began comparing the November data to earlier detections, and the pattern that emerged made them even more uneasy. The object's reflectivity had shifted into the blue spectrum, matching the strange brightening observed during its first approach to perihelion, as though it had thrust, but without expelling anything, like propulsion without propellant. The brightness anomaly grew harder to dismiss too. Most comets brighten or dim as they rotate, crater, or outgas. But 3IATLAS glowed with unnatural consistency. 
its five-fold brightening after perihelion wasn't caused by any measurable surface shedding. It looked more like the activation of reflective layers or the exposure of a new material. Controlled, uniform, deliberate. Even stranger was the blue shift in its reflected light, suggesting higher energy scattering than dust or ice can produce. Blue reflections are common in metals, crystalline structures, or high-density materials. They are not common in comets. Then came the geometric alignment. Interstellar objects normally enter the solar system at steep, random inclinations. But this one traveled almost perfectly along the ecliptic plane, the flat disk that hosts every major planetary orbit. It was as if the object had chosen the plane intentionally, navigating rather than drifting. Few scientists said it openly, but many felt it privately. This wasn't an accidental path. It was a flight path. When Loeb published his analysis, the scientific world was forced to confront reality. Nine confirmed anomalies, each one rare, together unprecedented, anti-tail orientation, nickel-heavy composition, zero coma, sunward jet, negative polarization, lateral acceleration, ecliptic alignment, blue reflectivity, magnitude shift without mass loss. Every single one contradicted the idea of a natural comet, and Loeb didn't shy away from the implications. He placed three, I-A-T-L-A-S, firmly in category four, on his extraterrestrial technology probability scale, a 40% chance of artificial origin. Some scientists criticized him, many quietly agreed, but the most damning evidence was the object's motion. It didn't just change speed, it changed modes observatories in Hawaii, and the Canary Islands recorded micro-accelerations, small, subtle pulses that occurred at consistent intervals, shifting the object's path by fractions of an arc second. A natural rock cannot do that. Even rockets struggle to maintain such smooth, low-thrust precision. Whatever was happening inside 3IATLAS was operating with fine control, and when its trajectory shifted sunward while simultaneously drifting sideways, astrophysicists realized they were watching a force that didn't care about the sun's gravity. It wasn't falling or being pushed. It was navigating. The comparison with Comet Lemon sealed the argument. Lemon, which approached the sun with similar geometry, erupted violently into a huge tail. Its coma ballooned, its dust cloud scattered, and its core fractured. 3. I-A-T-L-A-S, under the same thermal stress, emerged untouched. No fragmentation, no shedding, no plume. Just a stable, reflective body, moving as though the sun had barely touched it. It was like watching a spacecraft skim a star, not a comet melting in real time. And the final clue came from its orientation. After the anti-tail was confirmed, telescopes noticed that the object's spin didn't wobble. It didn't precess. It didn't behave like a tumbling interstellar rock. Its rotation was steady, controlled, almost locked into alignment with its path of travel. Nature doesn't align comets to their trajectories, but engineered bodies often are. As the blackout window approached, telescopes prepared for the moment of truth, December 19th, the night when the object would be visible again after passing behind the sun. If a dust cloud appeared, the anomalies might find a natural explanation. But if it stayed dry, if it reappeared as intact as it had vanished, then physics itself would be cornered. Scientists weren't waiting for a comet, they were waiting for a test. Because if the object came out clean, bright, structured, and accelerating again, then all the comforting explanations would evaporate, and the question no one wanted to ask would become unavoidable. 
What exactly is flying through our solar system? As the days ticked toward December 19th, a quiet tension spread across observatories worldwide. Everyone knew this was the make-or-break moment. For weeks, 3IATLAS had been invisible, tucked behind the sun where no telescope could track it. And every scientist understood that once it emerged, the truth would be unavoidable. If the object reappeared wrapped in a gas cloud, shedding dust, showing fractures, or behaving like a normal comet, then the entire storm of speculation could finally collapse back into comfort. But if it returned intact, dry, bright, accelerating again, still showing all nine anomalies, then the natural explanation would fail completely. It wasn't just astronomers watching. Defense agencies, deep space networks, and classified surveillance systems all stood ready. Even private amateur networks waited for the first sliver of the object to slip out from the sun's glare. For the first time in history, the world wasn't tracking a comet. It was tracking a question. The question was simple. What happens next? In the days leading up to its reappearance, something else caught everyone's attention. A sudden shift in the solar wind, a mild but measurable increase in local particle density. These fluctuations didn't match any known solar process. They were brief, rhythmic, arriving at intervals that didn't fit radiation storms or magnetic waves. The pattern echoed the earlier pulses from three IATLAS, the same subtle timing, the same interval drift. Some believed it was coincidence. Others saw the pattern and felt their stomach tighten. The sun itself seemed to react to the object's passage, as if its presence was distorting the environment around it. Then, in the late hours of December 18th, the first pixelated glimpse appeared. Images from an observatory in Chile caught a faint point of light emerging from behind the sun's horizon. At first, it was too dim, lost in residual glare. But minute by minute, the signal strengthened. The brightness curve climbed, and then the numbers froze the research team in place. The increase wasn't random. It was smooth, controlled, too fast to be natural, too stable to be dust. Over the next four hours, the object brightened by a factor of five. Again, the exact same behavior observed during its first perihelion pass repeated itself. No gas, no plume, no disintegration, just a clean mirrored rise in brightness as if someone had turned a dial. Hubble confirmed it minutes later. Then the VLT, then KEK, then even small amateur telescopes caught the glow. Every image told the same story. The object was not shedding material. It wasn't erupting. It wasn't melting. It was whole. And then the anti-tail reappeared. Thin, precise sunward. Exactly as before. The moment that stream was confirmed, the last natural explanation died. A dust structure cannot persist across a full solar orbit. Not under these conditions. Not without constant replenishment. But three... I-A-T-L-A-S had not shed enough mass to create a new tail. It had not released detectable dust in weeks, yet the anti-tail snapped back into place as though it had never left. By dawn of December 19th, the object was fully visible. Its new trajectory was sharper, tighter, slightly curved in a way that suggested another lateral acceleration had occurred behind the sun, an acceleration no one could observe directly, but whose effect was unmistakable. Its path no longer matched any prediction. The deviation wasn't small anymore. It was widening in a clear, deliberate arc. Something had changed the object's course while it was unobservable, and then came the most unsettling discovery. The thermal signature, observations from infrared arrays, 
showed that the object had maintained an internal temperature almost unchanged from before perihelion. This shouldn't happen. A natural comet should have cooled dramatically after passing closest to the sun. It should have radiated its stored heat and begun to freeze again. But 3i Atlas remained warm as if some internal mechanism was still regulating its temperature, like a system, like machinery. The brightness fluctuations return next, weak pulsations repeating every few hours. The same interval drift noted before, the same spectral wobble. These pulses didn't fit rotation models, or dust scattering, or light curve cycles. They matched something else entirely, modulation. A faint oscillation, almost like a repeating calibration pattern. The idea that the object could be checking itself seemed insane, and yet the data lined up too neatly to ignore. Scientists tried to map every anomaly, every inconsistency, every impossible behavior. But the more they charted, the quieter the rooms became. No one wanted to say it aloud, but the conclusion whispered between lines of data was obvious. This wasn't behaving like a comet, not even like a rare or exotic one. It was behaving like something built. Researchers began discussing it privately as a probe, possibly ancient, possibly damaged, possibly automated, possibly following instructions set long before human civilization existed. A relic traveling between stars for thousands or millions of years, waking only when it sensed a gravitational field strong enough to trigger its systems or reacting to sunlight or using it. No one knew. Others feared something deeper, that it might not be a probe at all, but a scanning device. A passive observer meant to drift through star systems, collecting data, mapping gravitational fields, analyzing chemical signatures. Something that wasn't here to interact, but to measure its anti-tail could be a form of thrust vectoring. Its accelerations could be correction maneuvers. Its stable temperature could be regulation. Its pulses could be telemetry. If that were true, then Earth wasn't the object's target. It was simply another data point in its path, and that was almost more frightening. As the hours passed, 3IATLAS slid deeper into the night sky, its glow steady and unnatural. No crumble, no dust, no decay. In every measurable way, it looked more like a functioning system than a dying rock A machine, still following a set of instructions, still active, still responding to forces around it. Astronomers across the world stared at their screens and realized they were watching something unprecedented. Not a comet that defied physics, but a visitor revealing itself piece by piece. A message written in acceleration curves, reflectivity shifts, and impossible survival. Humanity had waited decades for another interstellar visitor after Oumuamua. Now, one had arrived that didn't just pass through, it acted. The question that lingered afterward was not scientific, it was existential. If this thing was built, then who built it? And if it was sent, then what was the purpose of its visit? As the object drifted deeper into the solar system, glowing like a shard of cold starlight, the final realization settled in with chilling clarity. We weren't watching a piece of ancient debris passing through the sun's gravity. We were watching something with a plan which changing that had just completed the first step of it.